Hello there, guildies. This is the Adventures Guild. I'm Steve. Still Jesse. We're still getting hot in here, Jesse. That was a very steamy introductory bumper. Whew. Borderline R-rated. That controller <laughs> had some apple-bottom jeans. <laughs> and boots with the fur. So, the N64 controller, as you're obviously all aware now because of A, what's in the title, and B, what you just saw for the first few seconds of this video. So notice the title specifically states the Nintendo 64 controller is genius. Or Not... what Steve texted me the other day when I said, did you lose your mind? <laughs> so I never once did we claim that it is a great controller or the best controller. It's a genius controller. Mm. And I feel like... The N the, so, so the N64 gets a lot of love. Everyone seems to have that nostalgia for the Nintendo 64, the games that were on it. People loved playing GoldenEye. And, you Almost know. like everybody on our channel voted it to be number one system. Exactly. Uh, so, but people still seem to knock the controller. Mm. You know, it's a great system. The controller's not that great. They call blah, it the blah, boomerang. Blah. Yeah, it's super awkward. You yeah. can throw it and it comes back to you. You can play fetch with your dog with it. You know, it... It's, it's kind of like the butt of some jokes, but there's something to be said about the absolute innovation and genius that went into this. And, and I want to break it down for you right now. It's great. All right, we're good. Let's go. <laughs> so think about this. Go, let's go back to the 90s. Actually, really even as far back as the 80s. Controllers, controllers were square. They had an analog, or they, I'm sorry, they had a D-pad and a couple of buttons. So, the N64, the PlayStation 1, um, the Sega Saturn, they come around and they're 3D. You know, the games are polygonal. There's cameras. So, the PlayStation 1 comes out. You have a fairly typical controller. It has a deep a D-pad and a bunch of buttons. But yet, we're in 3D space. So, Nintendo says, well, you know, to be able to move a character do different things in 3D space, it would mm. be really useful to have an analog stick. So Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, was the very first system to get an analog stick. Now, sure, you could say, well, why isn't the analog stick up here, blah, blah, blah. You know, it could be anywhere else. Why is it on this third leg, this tripod here in the middle? You know, what's the rationale there? And I can explain it for you right now. So people are used to, at this point, certain layouts for controllers so when you hold a controller the nintendo the super nintendo the genesis what have you even the playstation one you know you have your left hand on the d-pad your right hand on the buttons this is the typical layout for a controller so nintendo said well i'm sure most of our games or at least many of our games are going to have that same control scheme with with a d-pad you know Sure, history, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty, and in, in actuality, most games use, use the analog stick. But the idea behind it was, let's give the players a, a typical control scheme. You have your D-pad, you have your shoulder buttons, you have your standard buttons, and then we'll have our camera controls over here on the side, but they can also double as additional face buttons. Extra buttons. So now, we have to convince people to play, or teach people how to play a different way. So let's design the controller to have two touch points, two different configurations to hold your controller. Configuration one, normal. I just moved up from the Super Nintendo. It's just like night and day, or just like, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's the same. You could have went with night and day. It was awkward that you stopped midway. <laughs> but now, all of a sudden, we have the analog stick with a secondary way to control. And not only that, when you hold it like this, you have an L button, an L shoulder button, a.k.a. the least used button on the Nintendo 64. If you have a well-used N64 controller, your L trigger is probably still, like, new. It springs an action. And that's problem. because it's replaced when you use the analog stick with the Z trigger. So you lose a button here, but you gain a button here. So not only do you gain an analog stick with a different layout, but you can now fire a trigger so, like... When you're playing shooting games, you have a trigger in the back or what have you. So it's it's very intuitive because 
it's just a natural progression from your standard layout to something brand new and analog. You know, and I think that is why Nintendo was so innovative with this controller and why the controller is so genius. I mean, two theories that are going around online is either Steve is absolutely right and that's why they made the controller that way, or Nintendo knew the Adventures Guild was going to make a video and made the controller like that for that reason. Those are just, that's what people are saying online. That's not me. <laughs> I mean, I would like to subscribe to the second option. Uh, but, I mean, you know, all jokes aside, you know, if you think about it from in that light, I mean, I think it's, it's genius. And, you know, that is why this controller is so awesome. It is. And it worked for the games that it came out it with. It sure did. I mean, you know, obviously we learned down the road that two analog sticks made more sense. No other controller ever had dedicated camera control buttons. You know, it probably could, would have been more successful, or probably would have been a better controller had it had a second analog stick for the for the uh, camera buttons instead. But you know, nobody this no this was untested. Nobody knew where this was going to go with the whole analog stick thing. If people were going to like it, space. how many games were going to use it exactly? So you know, that's just one more um, one more thing to go towards how Nintendo was innovated. You know, eventually, you know, later on down the road with the Wii, with the motion controls, and, you know, what have you. So uh, It's not like their very next system doubled the buttons and went crazy. GameCube? Get yes, it? but the GameCube still only had one analog stick. Yeah, you're right. I would just like to interrupt this broadcast to elaborate on something that we just said. Uh, sounds like we just said that the GameCube controller does not have two analog sticks. Huh, that's interesting. This is an analog stick, and so is that. The C stick is analog. Uh, so what I meant when I said that was, um, it is not an analog stick in the traditional sense. So if you think of like the Xbox One or the PS4 controller, um, you know, you move and look freely. So the analog stick on the GameCube is more of an evolution from the four camera face buttons on the N64 controller. Uh, even it's even gated in a weird way like the plastic is cut in a way where it's really meant to be pushed in a specific direction rather than held in an analog style um, yes it can be used as an analog stick um, but that's not really the way you would think of it in a modern sense so just a wanted to throw that out there real quick we're not crazy uh, we've played with the GameCube controller for thousands of hours so <laughs> there it is back to the video well, that was it. We just wanted to have a quick uh, explanation of why we think the N64 controller is so genius. And that's it. That's it. So, there you go. This is weird, man. <laughs> For the Adventures Guild, I'm Steve. Steel Jesse. And we will catch all 64. <laughs> that was dumb. There's so many more of them. <laughs> we'll catch you later.